At Middle Tech, manufacturing and distribution of scaffolding systems is one of our specialties. Our products are innovative, reliable, and of course very safe. This is very important because as soon as a person climbs onto scaffolding, he or she is at risk for serious injury and even life-threatening accidents. As a guide, it's your responsibility to ensure that the customer uses the scaffolding properly. For some types of work, you don't always need scaffolding, but sometimes you need more than just a stepladder. So that's why Metal Tech offers a series of scaffolding stepladders that we'll show you quickly before talking about scaffolding. At the end of this training video, you'll know the main safety standards to respect for scaffolding, and you'll be able to advise people about the basic tools needed for assembly. Then, we'll show you step by step how to proceed with assembly. The first level, the decking surface and additional levels, and then we'll finish up with stabilizing the scaffolding. Then, we'll show you some mobile scaffolding. So, let's get to it. When finishing drywall joints in a house, for example, redoing a ceiling or simply washing windows, the stepladder does not always do the job, but you might not necessarily need 5 foot tall scaffolding. That's why we designed the Scaffolding Stepladder, a handy device that's mounted on locking wheels and equipped with anti-slip platforms. The Scaffolding Stepladders have load-bearing capacities that are rather surprising for their size, and each model is made of either steel or aluminum for those who want the same load capacity but much lighter. So we have the Mini, Maxi Round, and the Maxi Square. They can be used on stairs with its adjustable posts. In construction or renovation, when you need to work at heights with heavy loads, with one or more people, and if you'll be making lateral movements, there's nothing like scaffolding. Assembling scaffolding must meet specific safety standards that we'll show you as we go along. The documentation provided by the manufacturer presents the main rules to follow. You have to advise customers to read it. But you also have to know that standards can vary by province or state or by the municipality in which it is located so it will be important to educate yourselves and advise customers to do the same. Once you're well informed, you have to check a few important points. Is there a cleared area wide enough not only for assembling the scaffolding but also for moving around? Is the ground solid? Is it free of obstacles like stones, roots that are sticking out, or any construction debris or scraps that could get in the way? You must also think about setting up a large enough safety perimeter so people and workers can get around it. And you must also take into account overhead clearance especially for electric power lines. For example, the minimum distance can be 10 feet or more according to the voltage and applicable standards. Before setting up the structure, you must always check the parts. You should pay special attention to heavy rust, cracks or questionable bumps. Finally, it's important to note that two people are needed to assemble scaffolding that's more than one level high, and according to applicable standards, it may even be mandatory that one has experience in this area, particularly on construction sites. It's important to avoid injury. Now let's discuss tools and accessories to safely assemble scaffolding. You're going to need a good level, a tape measure, a drill and preferably a hammer drill, a good hammer, a good wrench, a hard hat, gloves, and finally, a safety harness equipped with an energy absorber that you attach to a safety line properly installed according to standards. You do this when working at heights of 6 or 10 feet according to regulations in effect where you are assembling scaffolding. Thanks to your advice, all your customers will be perfectly equipped to get the job done efficiently and safely. To assemble stationary scaffolding, you use 2x10 planks that meet standards so the load is distributed on the base of the scaffolding. You have to set them down lengthwise to join at least two posts. Then you place the leveling jacks in the center of the planks but don't set them right away. Also each leveling jack must be placed a minimum of 6 inches and a maximum of 12 inches from the end of the plank. The screw at the center of each leveling jack will help set the level. Take the one on the highest point on the ground and lower the nut close to the base while keeping some leeway or room for minor adjustments. 
You must now choose the right frame to meet the customer's needs. The most popular standard frame is 60 inches wide by 60 inches high. It is also offered in 72 and 76 inches high. You can also choose a half frame that's 30 inches wide by 60 inches high. Finally, there is the arch frame with or without ladder. For our demonstration, we'll use a standard frame that can be installed first on the side of the leveling jack located on the highest point on the ground, being careful to position the ladder near the wall. It is important to facilitate the passage of the lifeline when it comes time to climb onto it. In regards to climbing, according to the height that you will reach or what you will be doing, it's possible that you'll be required to install a stairway. Once again, you must consult the regulations to that effect. Then you set a first cross brace on the frame. According to the model, make sure that the gravity locks or the pin locks are completely closed to prevent the cross brace from coming out. Install the second frame in place on the other leveling jacks while setting the other end of the cross brace. You then set the second cross brace. Cross braces must always be installed on both sides for each level, not just on one side. If not, the scaffolding will never achieve its maximum strength and won't be safe. Okay, the frames are very solid, but they are not yet level. And this is very important for ensuring the stability of the scaffolding. First, check the level directly on the crossbar of the frame located on the leveling jack on the highest point on the ground and adjust the other leveling jack on the frame if needed. Careful, since the leveling jacks must not be used at more than two-thirds of their height, they have an integrated safety blocking system to prevent unscrewing them too far. You then check the leveling lengthwise, taking the measure on the vertical on the second frame and by placing the level on the axis of the cross brace and adjust the third leveling jack. You then take the level on the crossbar of the second frame and adjust the fourth leveling jack so the frame is properly horizontal. Even if it's level, that does not mean that the assembly of the two frames form a proper rectangle. If a frame is offset from the other, the corner angle isn't square. To correct this, make sure that each of the diagonal measurements are identical. Once this is done, recheck the level on each frame you can now set the basis of your leveling jacks. You can use wood screws, or more often, two and a half inch twisted framing nails that you bend out. You put two in diagonally for each leveling jack. If the ground is perfectly level and straight, you can use the base plate instead of a leveling jack. If there is a slope, such as for a roof, a street, or a garage entrance, you can use a swivel base plate that is used with a leveling jack with socket. Finally, it's very important to remember that it's just until the scaffolding is level and square that it has reached its maximum load capacity. MetalTech offers a wide choice of decking surfaces that are safe and stable. The most popular is the platform made of aluminum with a plywood deck. It is equipped with very practical safety locks. The all-aluminum platform also has safety locks and the advantage of being anti-slip and corrosion resistant. You can also opt for the Lee Light Engineering Plank. It is specifically designed for scaffolding and meets all required resistance tests supervised in Canada by the CSA or Canadian Standards Association and in the United States by the OSHA, that is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The Lelite textured surface is skid resistant. It is made of laminated and glued wood. A sealer is applied at each end. If a customer already has planks, you'll be doing a great service by reminding him or her that they must avoid using planks that have saw marks that could weaken them. And there shouldn't be any cracks or wanes or even excessive warping or buckling, which may destabilize them. It should be noted that the decking surface must be configured so that it will not tip over or slide. The minimum width must be 18 and a half inches. Ideally, you should cover the entire surface. So you lay down the planks on the top transverse member of the frame and nowhere else. The plank must exceed the structure by six inches to one foot on each side of the structure. To keep it from slipping, it's a good idea to use blocks or restraints to prevent any lateral movement. 
Then, you securely attach the planks to the frames with wire that has a gauge that meets local standards. Usually, this will be 9 gauge. The fasteners should never interfere with movement. The method of setting the planks may vary according to the legislation of your province, your state, or even your town, so it's important to be well informed.